It's always felt like a really special community, and I hope that that never goes away. Well, it happened December 25th, Midnight Mass, 1928. Brophy Chapel became officially St. Francis Xavier Parish. And that is how it all began. Brophy Chapel is proud of its heritage, that it was the first parish church at St. Francis Xavier. With a generous donation of land and capital, and to honor her late husband, William, Ellen A. Brophy in 1928 provided the means to establish Brophy College as a Jesuit institution. Later that same year, Bishop Daniel J. Gerke of the Tucson Diocese commissioned St. Francis Xavier, that's the land surrounding the campus, as just the second parish to serve the city of Phoenix. At the time, there were only 49,000 residents in Phoenix, so there was no need to build a church. Mass was held in the Brophy Chapel, and the pastor lived in residence on campus. This was all flat area, dirt, tamarack trees, and beautiful cottonwood trees, and just a wonderful playground. And that's what we considered our, the, the church was for us. Our friends were all connected to the church. My schooling was all connected to the church. And we had all kinds of fun things here. There's so many happy memories, it's hard to describe which was the best. <laughs> I was baptized here at St. Francis Church in 1932 at Brophy. It was a big family, a close-knit family. Everybody cared about everybody else. And, and we had a lot of picnics and good, wholesome time. Of course, there's no air conditioning. And uh, my oldest daughter remem remembered that uh, several times people passed out because it was a little warm. Only two years after its founding, the vision for Brophy College collapsed amid the financial ruins of the Great Depression. And it wasn't until 1952 that Brophy College Prep emerged from the ruins as an all-boys high school. Brophy, at one time, it was during the Depression, closed down, and the nuns, the VVMs, were the ones that formed this parish. If it wouldn't have been for the, uh, for the BVMs, I don't know if it would have been what it is today. The original school struggled in those early years, but the parish slowly grew. In 1936, five sisters of the Blessed Virgin Mary began teaching at the parochial grade school. And in 1943, a preschool grade school and an all-girls high school, Xavier High, were added to the parish curriculum. 53, Brophy, uh, the boys came back and uh, then the girls would be upstairs dropping things out the window. Of course, sister was very, she knew what was going on. They were making dates for Friday night. The, the, the nuns did a great job because they, each classroom had around 50 kids in it. I mean, in today's world, 50 kids is a lot of kids to teach. They, they did such a great job of, uh, of discipline, of the big punishment. You have to write a hundred times. You've got to write, I'm going to be a good child or whatever it is. <laughs> Her name was Sister Mary Theoda, and she was amazing. Very young sister, nun. And she had a motorcycle, and she we thought that was the coolest thing ever, and she would give us they probably weren't supposed to know this, but she would give us rides on her motorcycle. It was really fun. By 1951, the baby boom was booming, and so was parish attendance. In the elementary school, there were a thousand kids enrolled, and on Sunday, there were up to 12 masses, seven at Brophy Chapel, three in the school cafeteria, and two on the school patio. I was confirmed in this church. I received, and I, I was baptized in this church. I, I received my first communion in this church. And that's what was so special for me. We have five children baptized in Little Brophy. And, and I call it Little Brophy because that's the way it was to us. We had uh, eight children. And that's why St. Francis really, the grade school in particular, 
meant a lot to us because we had all eight of the kids graduate from St. Francis. And then we had two girls and six boys. So the six boys went to Brophy and the two girls went to Xavier. I have six, four boys and two girls. They all went to St. Francis grade school and Xavier and Brophy. In 1958, St. Francis Xavier Parish finally began construction of its own church. It was completed and dedicated the following year on the Feast of St. Ignatius. It seats 1,500 people, which at the time made it the largest church in the state of Arizona. Its beautiful, warm, serene worship space is attractive to both Catholic and non-Catholic alike. In fact, one day in 1963, a tour of more than 600 non-Catholics came here just to experience the peace and beauty of St. Francis. We went from a small, humble parish to a grand, beautiful church overnight, and, and uh, it was awesome. My husband collected, he went door to door knocking on doors, collecting money for this church. He was a tremendous salesman, and he got plenty of donations. The parish continued to grow steadily. In 1971, the first parish directory was printed, representing 2,400 families. In 1985, the RCIA program for Catholic converts began, and in 1987, during his pilgrimage to the United States and Arizona, Pope St. John Paul II processed right down Central Avenue next to the church. Growth and structure modification continues steadily, and the 60-acre parish campus encompassing a church, grammar school, and two high schools is the heartbeat of the finest education that can be found in the state of Arizona. Our uh, school is superb. Our programs are growing and they're growing better and better each year. Wonderful uh, faculty and staff administration. And the heart of it, of course, is, is the parents and the students that come here. The Jesuit influence is important. It's the only Jesuit parish in the state. I think the Jesuits are outstanding in their personalities, and their relationships with the parishioners. The love for education that the Jesuits have and the pushing that people do the more, do, you know, just always there's another level to reach. They strive for uh, excellence in education and uh, the uh, love of your fellow man. It's uh, men for others, people for others. The biggest change is just the success of Brophy and Xavier as a result of St. Francis. I have toured the uh, grade school and Everything is just the latest. Everything is just the best. This parish has, because of the facilities that are built here now and the area that it's in, I think this, this parish has a, has a really bright future. Now celebrating its 90th anniversary, St. Francis Xavier Parish continues to thrive by meeting the intellectual, spiritual, and corporal needs of its enthusiastic and dedicated parishioners. It's more than 60 ministries conduct outreach and enrichment to more than 30,000 people. We know of friends that have become Catholics as they saw how the kids were acting, met the parents and everything. They just decided to join the church. A very family-oriented community. They're very welcoming and it's, they're very loving. Uh, you can't help but want to be involved when you come to this parish. I just am very proud to be a part of this community and I just absolutely love everybody at this parish. The most important thing I think we can do here is to be bridge builders, reconcilers, healers. We've gotten to that point where we need to come together. That's our main goal. And in the Jesuit tradition, St. Francis Xavier Parish does it all for the greater honor and glory of God.